Hello, my name is Mike Panaki. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to use the Fluke Network's Multifiber Pro to test MPO MTP trunk cables. Before we get started testing fiber, there are a few important safety rules we should go through. Under no circumstances should you ever look into a fiber. The wavelength being used cannot be seen by the naked eye. Light from an active fiber, if powerful enough, can permanently damage your eyesight. The equipment we are using today cannot do permanent damage to your eyesight if exposed occasionally. If you are told a fiber is not active, treat it as if it is. Never face the front of a fiber patch panel unless all of the fiber connections have protective caps on them. Obey any safety requirements mandated by your company. Before we start testing cables, we must first determine the loss limit. There are two ways we can determine this limit. The first is to use the value specified in the contract. The second is to look up the limit based on the type of fiber we're using and the application being deployed over the fiber. In our case, we don't have a contract, so we use the fiber type and the application to determine the limit. We'll be testing this MPO trunk cable to ensure it will support 100G base SR. We know the fiber we're using is OM4. Now we can go to the Fluke Network's website and find the limit lines. This document shows us the maximum allowable loss based on the application and the fiber type. In this case, we can see that the maximum loss for 100 G base SR over OM4 fiber is 1.9 dB. Before we run the tests, I will set the loss limit on the light meter. Now let's take a look at the equipment we'll be using for testing the MPO trunk cable. First, we have the light source. In this case, I'll be testing multi-mode fiber, so I'll be using the 850 nanometer light source. Here we have the power meter. It is on the power meter that we set the loss limit. I'm going to press the menu select button for three seconds. That will bring up a menu where I can enter the loss limit. I will hit the F1 key once to go to the loss limit. Then I'll press the menu select to go to the loss limit screen. Now I'll use the F1 and F2 buttons to change the loss limit to the value I looked up in the limit lines. In this case, I'll set it to 1.9 dB. I'll press the menu select to save the limit. I'll then press the menu select for three seconds to go back to the main screen. Before we start testing the trunk cable, let's go through the cables I'll be using to test the pinned to pinned MPO trunk cable. This is a good time to talk about MPO connectors. It is important that we always connect pinned connectors to unpinned connectors. Connecting two unpinned connectors together will result in poor alignment and significant signal loss. Connecting two pinned connectors together may result in damage to one or both of the connectors. The first cable is a pinned to pin test cable. The next cable is a pinned to unpinned test cable. Since we are using a pin to pin trunk cable, we'll also be using a short unpinned to unpinned test cable as well. Prior to testing any of the cables, it is important to make sure the end faces of each of the cables is clean. This is accomplished by using the Fluke Network's FI7000 fiber inspection scope with an MPO MTP adapter at the end of the camera. On the Versa mainframe, I will select the fiber inspection tool. Next, I will connect a bulkhead adapter to the MPO connector I'm going to test. I've found it's much easier to connect the bulkhead adapter first and then connect it to the camera. Here we can see the end face of the MPO connector on the screen of the Versa mainframe. By rotating the knobs on the MPO inspection adapter, I can center the end faces in the screen and move across the end of the connector. It is important that we inspect all 12 of the end faces before connecting the fiber to our test equipment or other fibers. Here, I can see that I've got an end face with some dirt on it. I will disconnect the fiber from the inspection scope and use the click cleaner to clean the end face. I open the cover on the click cleaner, insert the fiber, and give it a click. Now I go back to the inspection scope to ensure that not only have I cleaned the dirty end face, but the rest of the end faces are clean as well. 
Now that I've inspected and cleaned all of my fiber end faces, I'm going to grab the pin to pin test cable. I will connect one end of this cable to my light source. I'll open the cover and insert the MPO connector into the connector on the top of the light source. It is important to note that once we have set reference, we do not want to disconnect this connector from the light source. If we do, we must go through the reference process again. To get the most accurate measurements, it's important that we uncoil the fiber test cables. So in this case, I'll lay these cables out before I set reference and run the tests. Another key factor to getting accurate measurements is to let the light source stabilize before setting reference and running tests. It's best to turn the light source on for five minutes before setting reference or taking a measurement. This time could be longer if you're bringing the light source in from a cold truck. The key is to look for negative readings after setting reference. I will take the other end of my pin to pin cable and connect it to the meter. Next, I will press the menu select button until I get to power mode. This will display the signal level for each of the channels. I want to make sure that there are five dots being displayed for each of the channels. If they're not, I need to inspect the end faces of the fiber and possibly the connectors on the test instruments. In this case, I can see that I'm getting all five dots for all of the channels. That's great. The value that we're looking for here is between negative 22 dBm and negative 25 dBm. Notice that we have an M at the end of these readings. This tells us that we're looking at an absolute power measurement, not a loss value. If we're only getting negative 35 dBm, something's wrong with the light source, connector, the fiber, or the meter. We would need to stop and fix the problem before proceeding with the testing process. To get to the set reference option, I will press menu select once. Referencing will begin automatically. After the meter has gone through all 12 channels, I will press save to set the reference. Once the reference has been set, the meter will switch to the loss screen. It is best to keep an eye on this screen for about 30 seconds. If, after going through all of the channels, you see any loss, it's important to go back and reset reference. Values other than zero here could indicate that the light source did not have time to stabilize before setting reference. As long as we see values less than a few hundredths of a dB, we're good to start testing. Now I'm going to disconnect the fiber from the meter side. Remember, I don't want to disconnect the fiber from the source now that we've set reference. I'll plug the fiber into the bulkhead connector. Anytime I disconnect a fiber, I like to have a place to put it that will keep the end face from getting dirty. I'll grab the pin to unpin test cable and connect it to the meter. After uncapping the other end, I will connect it to the bulkhead connector. After the meter has had a chance to scan all of the channels, I will make sure the loss does not exceed 0.35 dB for any of the channels. If it does, this could indicate that I have a bad test cable or the end faces are dirty. I would need to inspect the end faces. If they're good, I will need to replace the pinned to unpinned test cable. If all of the loss values are less than 0.35 dB, I press the menu select button until I see set reference on the screen. Referencing will begin automatically. After the referencing process is complete, I will press save to zero out my measurements and save the second reference. I have now referenced out both of my test cables. After setting the second reference, I will disconnect the meter and the light source at the bulkhead connector. I'll connect the short unpinned unpinned test cable to the light source bulkhead connector. This gives me two unpinned connectors to connect to my pinned to pin trunk cable. Upon connecting the light source and the meter to the link I wish to certify, the meter will begin measuring the loss. It takes about six seconds for this process to complete. The optical loss for each of the fibers will be displayed. Each dot represents 25% of the loss limit entered at the beginning of this process. In this case, we can see that the loss value is clearly less than the 1.9 dB limit we set. If it exceeded the value, we would want to inspect the connectors and test again before saving the test results. If we see a loss value of less than negative 0.09 dB, the test will fail. A high negative loss value like this is known as a gainer. 
This is an indicator that we did not allow the light sources to stabilize or some other problem before setting reference and running the test. If this occurs, you will need to go through the referencing process again. After the measurement process is complete, I will press F1 to save the loss readings for each of the 12 fibers. The number in the upper right on the meter will show us the starting channel for the next group of tests to be saved. Each time you save the test results, this number will be incremented automatically. Should you need to delete a set of measurements, press the menu select button for three seconds. Then press F1 to go down to view record. Press menu select. You can now use the F1 and F2 buttons to scroll through the saved test results. To delete a set of results, press F3 once and delete question mark will appear. Press and hold F3 until the record is deleted. The meter can store up to 3,000 loss results. This is equal to 250 MPO links, each with 12 fibers. Once testing is complete, the test results can be uploaded to Linkware PC by using a USB cable. Thank you for watching this video on using the Fluke Network's Multifiber Pro to test MPO trunk cables. For more information about the Multifiber Pro and knowledge base articles, please visit www.flukenetworks.com.